Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the conference on the status and prospects of the Green ODA of the Republic of Korea. The conference is co-hosted by Interdisciplinary Study Group on Climate Change and Environment of Korea University, Global Green Growth Institute, United Nations Development Program Seoul Policy Center, Asia Europe Foundation, and Center for Climate and Sustainable Development Law and Policy. I'm Heyun Jung from the Center of Global Climate and Marine Governance of Global Research Institute. You're an announcer for today. Now let us begin the conference with the opening remarks from the hosting institution. Please welcome Dr. Jin Han Ri, the Executive Vice President for Research of Korea University with a big round of applause. Okay. Good morning and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to today's conference on status and prospects of the Green ODA of the Republic of Korea. Particularly, I thank Young Mu Cho, Director General of Development Corporation Bureau of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Jae Shin Park, Vice President for Program Strategy and Asia Programs of COICA, Frank Riesbomen, uh, Director General of Global Green Growth Institute, and uh, Stefan Kringenbill, uh, Director of UNDP Seoul Policy Center, uh, Gregina Polauska, Acting Director of Sustainable Development and Health Department of Asia Europe Foundation, and uh, Hoyong An, Senior Advisor of CSD Lab uh, for attending the conference. Today's conference is co-hosted by the Interdisciplinary Study Group on Climate Change and Environment of Korea University, Global Green Growth Institute, and UNDP Seoul Policy Center, Asia Europe Foundation, and CSD Lab. As you know, this conference is an online one due to COVID-19. Uh, considering the complex nature of today's conference issues, an interdisciplinary approach is the most important for providing comprehensive and effective solutions to the problems of our planet Earth. Particularly, I believe climate change, environment, and sustainable development are leading topics to stimulate such interdisciplinary research and education. Therefore, I am very pleased to give my welcoming remarks at this conference. As we have been facing unprecedented challenges from COVID-19, it has become important for countries to develop and prepare post-COVID-19 recovery measures. For this, Green New Deal and Net Zero policies are very important to ensure sustainable development and to create new jobs in this difficult time. However, many of the developing countries are having difficulties in realizing the Green New Deal measure due to insufficient knowledge and resources. Therefore, the Republic of Korea, along with other advanced countries, international organizations, think tanks, and universities must make contributions to help the developing world by providing and implementing good policies on Green ODA. I do believe today's conference with the renowned scholars, leading international organizations and think tanks is an excellent opportunity to identify viable theories, practices of Green ODA of the Republic of Korea. I also wish participants may find an avenue for continuing discussions on Green ODA together with Korea University so that we can keep on addressing relevant issues among all the organizations and experts for today's conference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ri, for your warm, welcoming remarks. Next. 
Please give a round of applause as I invite Mr. Youngmu Cho, the Director General of the Development Cooperation Bureau of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Jin An Bi, Executive Vice President for Research of Korean University, His Excellency Ambassador Ho Young An, Senior Advisor of the Center for Climate and Sustainable, Sustainable Development Law and Policy, and former Vice Foreign Minister, Mr. Jason Ba. Vice President for Program Strategy and Asia Programs of COICA. Distinguished participants, let me begin by expressing my sincere gratitude to Professor Jung So Yong, head of the interdisciplinary study group on climate change and environment of Korea University, and his team for their contribution and work put into organizing this meaningful conference. I would also like to offer my thanks to all those who are attending this conference with a special interest in Korean ODA of the Republic of Korea. It is my great pleasure to take this opportunity to briefly introduce the Korean ODA policy of the Korean government. Faced with the unprecedented crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, every country is striving to minimize the problems caused by the pandemic by implementing economic stimulus measures and strengthening social safety nets. But for a more sustainable and comprehensive response to the pandemic, we cannot put aside the environmental aspect. This is why the international community is developing the concept of building back better and greener. Domestically, the Korean government has announced a set of measures to build back better and greener from COVID-19 more effectively. The government launched the Green New Deal last year as one of the three main pillars of its New Deal policy, along with the digital New Deal and st uh, strengthening of employment and the social safety net. Subsequently, the Korean government pledged to go carbon neutral by 2050, together with other major economies. To support the international community's efforts toward the sustainable development from eco-friendly and zero carbon aspect, the Korean government is also working to establish Korean ODA policy. At the Committee for International Development Cooperation meeting chaired by the Prime Minister last month, the Korean government adopted the third mid-term strategy for development cooperation for 2021 to 2025 and underlined the importance of Korean ODA. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is in charge of formulating, implementing, and coordinating grant aid policies has been working on a Green New Deal grant strategy in cooperation with relevant ministries. Today, I'd like to introduce some of the key elements of this strategy. First, the overarching goal of this strategy is to enable Korea to make a contribution to global green transition as a green leader. The strategy is aimed at selecting and implementing flagship green projects in the areas of climate change mitigation and adaptation, as well as in the combined forms of the two areas. Also, the implementation of this project will be closely aligned with our key regional strategies, the new Southern policy and the new Northern policy. Second, the Korean government will raise the proportion of its green ODA up to the average level of OECD town members. While working to set a specific goal for our Green ODA policy, we will also continue to identify development programs and projects in the area of Green ODA to better meet the needs of developing countries. Lastly, all these efforts for Green ODA cannot be done by the government alone. We need strong green partnerships with a variety of development cooperation stakeholders, such as international organizations, including GGGI, civil society organizations, universities, and businesses. Strengthening green partnership will be a key element of Korea's green ODA policy. That is why today's conference is a timely and meaningful opportunity for the Korean government to gain valuable ideas, which are essential for implementing the green ODA policy effectively and successfully. Your comments and advices will be taken into consideration when formulating Korean ODA strategies. I hope this conference will be a great success. Thank you.
Thank you, Director General, for your opening remarks. Now, I would like to introduce a very special guest who came to congratulate the opening of today's conference. Dr. Jeshin Park is the Vice President for Program Strategy and Asia Programs of Korea International Cooperation Agency. Please welcome. Uh, distinguished speakers, colleagues, and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank first the Korea University and partner institutions for organizing this timely and important conference on the status and prospects of the Green ODA of the Republic of Korea. Last year, as was the case in many other areas, the coronavirus pandemic imposed a great deal of difficulty to many of us working in international development cooperation. The fight to overcome the pandemic is not over yet, the fight um, we are struggling to get through, not only just to go back to the normal, but also to build back better and greener. The Korean government presented its determination for green recovery and for transforming the society toward carbon neutrality by 2050. But of course, the climate crisis is not the only Korea's problem, but it's a global issue that all international communities need to work together in cooperation and collaboration. As the public institution of Korea dedicated to ODA, COICA will make efforts to implement the Green New Deal ODA plan we formulated for carbon neutrality in accordance with the government policy and strategy. In terms of real marker system, the government's um, uh, the intent to increase the grant type Green New Deal ODA ratio among its portfolio uh, from 8% in 2018 to 11% in 2025. And COICA also plans to double the ratio of the Green New Deal ODA by 2025 to 15% level, which is more ambitious than the government's target. In terms of areas of focus of the Green New Deal ODA, COICA uh, has set a direction to actively identify project opportunities for first low carbon energy transformation, second eco-friendly means of transportation like electric mobility, and third smart green city development. COICA will also make effort to promote and disseminate green innovation technologies. And we are also currently processing the qualification procedure in order to work with the Global Climate Fund, GCF. Overall, no doubt that COICA is committed toward green recovery or green development of our partner countries through ODA, but it cannot be done without the support, encouragement, and collaboration with our partner institutions and expert and professionals who gather here today. I see that various important issues are to be addressed today including the inseparability between sustainable development and the climate change, green financing, and the role of international organizations and the role of universities. These issues are crucial because it's high time for us to articulate uh, what re results we expect from this endeavor, with what resources and with whom we can do successfully implement the Green New Deal ODA. I look forward that valuable experiences and insight are to be shared today. And no doubt that those will shed light on the way of Korea's Green New Deal ODA drive. Thanks all participants for your contributions and thanks Korea University and organizing steps very much again for making this wonderful conference taking place today. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Park, for your congratulatory remarks. Now, please give a round of applause as I invite Ambassador Ho Young An, the Senior Advisor of CSD Lab and former Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs. Well, it is such a pleasure to say a few words at this seminar. If anybody still doesn't understand what CSD Lab stands for, it stands for Center for climate and sustainable development law and policy. So as the name suggests, this is a non-profit think tank 
very narrowly focused on developing law and policy related with climate and sustainable development, and then work very closely with a large number of developing economies in Asia in, and in Africa. And then we do it in very close partnership with Korea University, with the Korean Foreign Ministry, with COICA, and then other institutions represented at this seminar. Now, I listened to all the previous speakers and they emphasized on the importance and timeliness of this conference. And of course, I agree with all their points. And then let me add my voice and emphasize about the timeliness of uh, this conference today. And I will be very brief, very brief. I wish to make only two points. The first point is, let us just think about the phase in which NDC, nationally determined contributions, where that stands for the time being. So far from 2015 to up to now, we in fact have been focused upon submission of NDCs. Now we should be shifting to implementation of NDCs. What does that imply? Well, large number of developing economies, they in fact had to work with us, that is to say, all the stakeholders in the area of climate change in order to develop the NDCs. Now they have to shift from submission stage to implementation stage. And then you could easily understand in the implementation stage, large number of developing economies, they would need even more capacity building to, to, to enter that stage, important stage of implementation. That's one reason why today's conference is so timely. Second reason is, well, well, in a sense, in a very timely manner, United States came back to join the Paris Accord. And then I think it, in fact, is a very welcome development in my mind as we make this shift from, say, submission stage to implementation stage. Why? Because, well, in the implementation stage, then, of course, we would need, have even greater need for technology and financing. And when it comes to technology and financing, of course, you could understand United States as a nation has a lot to offer. So these are two reasons. Of course, there are far more reasons than I can well, share with you. But these are at least two reasons why today's seminar is so timely and, and important. So let me stop here and then listen to professionals and then tr try to learn from them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador An, and please give a round of applause to all four speakers for their insightful remarks, each reflecting their high expectations on today's conference.